So, Arcane ended this past weekend, but literally who cares? Because it let Riot finally drop some new footage of their upcoming fighting game Project L. Now, Project L isn't ready for release just yet, and I mean, it doesn't even have a real name yet, but that little bit of footage we saw actually revealed a ton of information about the game, some of which they didn't even talk about on stream. And at the risk of sounding excited for a Riot game, Project L looks like it could be really f***ing good. Okay, before we talk about Project L, I just want to make sure that you're all subbed to the channel. So please, if you aren't already, hit the sub button and turn on notifications because it really does help. Okay, so in case you missed the news, Riot has finally shown off Project L, their upcoming League of Legends fighting game. This game has been in various stages of development for a really long time, and at one point, it was called the worst kept secret in fighting games. Officially, it was announced at EVO 2019, and we got the tiniest amount of footage in October 2019, but hardcore fans have been waiting for this game since 2016. See, five whole years ago, Riot bought Radiant Entertainment, a dev studio run by Tom and Tony Cannon, the founders of EVO, who back then were working on a game called Rising Thunder. Rising Thunder is actually still playable, and it's a pretty cool Cool game, but the idea was that it's a fighting game that you can play on a keyboard. Each character had special moves you could use with one button, and they were all tied to cooldowns. Sort of like League of Legends, right? Anyway, Radiant got bought, and everyone immediately assumed that Riot was working on a fighting game with them. And lo and behold, we were all right, and now that we've finally seen the damn thing, it actually looks pretty cool. Okay, so let's get the big, obvious Project L stuff out of the way. I'm gonna try my best to communicate all this information in such a way that hopefully if you don't play fighting games, this could help you understand why you might want to be excited for this game. And please forgive me if I get too fighting game nerdy. Project L, which doesn't have a name yet, is a 2v2 tag fighter. That means you pick two characters to bring into a game and you can swap between them at the press of a button. This is inspired by the Versus series of games, made most popular by Marvel vs. Capcom 2, which used a 3v3 system, but plenty of games have been 2v2, including Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, Tekken Tag Tournament, even Skullgirls gives you an option of playing a two-character team. Like some of those games, and uh, unlike other ones of those games, Project L has an assist mechanic. At any time during a match, you can press an assist button to call your non-active character out onto the battlefield to do one of their attacks. This can help make longer combos or, you know, open your opponent up into neutral. It's really versatile. We don't know if this game has a traditional Marvel 2 style assist system where characters have a predetermined list of assists you get to choose from before you start a set, or if this is more like Skullgirls where any move the character has can be the one assist you choose, or if characters have access to multiple assists in one set, sort of like in Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. What we do know is that each character seems to have access to multiple different kinds of assists, and that there is some amount of ability to cancel into your tag during a combo. That means that this combo you're seeing right now is only possible because Echo can actually cancel his button into tagging into Ari, which is gonna open up some insane combos. And folks, they showed off some pretty sweet combos. I'm not usually a heavy grappler kind of player, but Darius has some absolutely insane stuff, including this crazy wall bounce charge attack combo. By the way, that was one of the little hidden mechanics they showed off but didn't talk about. We don't know if it's a system level thing or just a passive ability that Darius has, but they showed him holding down and charging a button multiple times, strengthening the attack and those charged attacks get a lot stronger. The combos they showed imply that Darius can do things like dash up and combo after charged buttons that otherwise don't lead into anything. Speaking of Darius, what they did use him to show off explicitly was Project L's input system, because unlike traditional fighting games, Project L is using single button based inputs for special moves instead of motion inputs. Basically, this means that instead of doing a quarter circle on your movement input of choice and then pressing a button to do a special move, it's more like Smash, where just pressing a special move button and maybe a single direction at the same time will get you what you're looking for. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of this, and I've seen a lot of people feel the same way. I'd rather this be an option, sort of like in Grand Blue Fantasy, but I understand that like Rising Thunder, part of the goal here is probably to make a fighting game that you can play easily with your keyboard. I imagine this game is probably going to have a ton of League of Legends players flooding in to try it when it comes out, and making sure that they can play this game with the same inputs they used to play League is really important. And Smash has shown that you don't need motion inputs to create a deep and complex battle system. 
I just way prefer quarter circles to single inputs because my brain is wired that way after playing fighting games for 20 years. The canon said that they want to make sure that this input style doesn't impact the skill ceiling of Project L. Now let's talk about controls. I know that a lot of you have strong opinions about mechanical difficulty in fighting games. For Project L, we're embracing the easy to learn, hard to master mentality. So yes, we are making it easier to jump in with a new character and learn their basic kit. That said, we absolutely believe in rewarding the time you spend going deep on a character and providing opportunities for you to showcase your high-end mastery. And I trust that they know what they're talking about. This is just one thing that I'm watching out for, I guess. From my perspective, I think it's really important that League and Valorant players can just pick up this game and play it without having to learn motion inputs. At the same time, I think it's equally important that the FGC at large gets really into this game, and I think that it would have an easier time of doing that if it had the option of choosing between quarter circles and single buttons. I mean, Guilty Gear and Grand Blue did it, and I imagine Riot is working with bigger budgets than our system works. Anyway, that aside, there are a few other cool mechanics they showed off. Most of the footage they showed was about Echo, who looks like a really cool character design. Basically, his kit revolves around Chrono Strike, a forward-moving attack that leaves behind an afterimage. For a small amount of time after inputting Chrono Strike, you can input it again to teleport to the afterimage's current location. One, this looks really cool. But two, and more importantly, it's got me thinking about all the cool gameplay options it opens up. It's pretty clear that its main purpose is to be a cool combo extender, which they showed it doing a few times. But they also show Echo using it to stay safe after some pressure, which is interesting. But what's really exciting to me is the mix-up potential. Like, think about this scenario. We see a version of Chrono Strike that isn't an attack. It's just a roll. Echo can use that to switch sides. He also has a slow-moving, arcing projectile in Timewinder. We also see an Ari assist that has her drop some projectiles, sort of like a mini version of Amaterasu's Cold Star assist in Marvel 3. All that combined can theoretically lead to some really nasty mix-ups with Echo. I mean, just think about this scenario. You knock the opponent down, you toss Timewinder, and you call Ari assist, and then you roll. Now, as they wake up, they have to block the grenade, block Ari, and then they have to guess which side Echo is going to be on, left or right. And if he has a fast, low-hitting move, they also have to guess between a low and a throw on top of that. And I know, I know, I'm theorycrafting a game that isn't even out yet. But this is the kind of stuff that gets me excited about Project L. They showed off just enough to tell me that this game is being made by fighting game players for fighting game players who want to think about this kind of stuff. But that does give me some pause, because tag fighters are notoriously difficult to learn and play. Not just because you have to learn two characters at once to play at a competent level, but also because that mix-up I just described is often the backbone of high-level play. Left-right high-low mix-ups happen all the time in versus games. Characters are fast and deal a lot of damage. Stuff moves quickly and can be overwhelming because the knowledge checks are often immense. I know that I said that it's important for this game that the FGC at large gets into it if it wants to succeed, but I also think it's important that a casual fan who is a League player doesn't hop online for the first time only to get schmixed by a champion they already hate like Yumi or something. Then again, Marvel 2 and 3 sold really well to casual audiences, so maybe I'm worrying about nothing here. Anyway, there are some more cool things they showed that they didn't explicitly talk about. Like, did you notice that the Ari loop they showed multiple times appears to have a hard limit of 3 reps? It looks like those Foxfire Fireball Chitaros hover around her and each one she tosses doesn't return to her. We never actually see them come back to her during the footage they showed, so I don't know if they're supposed to automatically regenerate over time, or if she turns them on with a special move like in League, or if they're tied to her super since we see her do Spirit Rush between the fireballs in the loop. Another cool thing I picked up on was that they showed either a perfect block or parry mechanic. There is a moment where we see Ari bust through an attack from Darius, and there's enough hit stun on this parry that Ari has time to dash up and then punish, which is pretty nice. Unclear if it's a system level thing or if just Ari has parries, but either way, it seems like it could be a pretty strong defensive mechanic. The last little nerdy thing I'll mention before the next big point is that Echo shows off a lot of movement. His forward dash and back dash look like they cover a lot of distance, but he also shows off a Marvel-style wave dash, retaining momentum after canceling his dash into a crouch. He also shows a little bit of air movement too. Like, I can't tell if this is a double jump or an undernight style air hop, but more movement options are always appreciated. The other big thing the Canons talked about was netcode. They're promising that this game is gonna run really well on a line, which, boy, I hope that's true. For Project Dell, we've designed our entire networking stack to deliver the same highly responsive gameplay that you'd get playing offline. Of course, this starts by using rollback networking at the core. 
Rollback does a great job of maintaining a consistent low input delay across a wide range of pings. We've also developed a new networking model that enhances the benefits of rollback with core technology developed by other games at Riot. We'll route network traffic between players through Riot Direct, our internal network already being used to minimize latency in League of Legends and Valorant. They're saying that Project L is going to run on some of the same online architecture that League and Valorant use, which does bode well because it's not exactly like those games are known for having horrible netcode issues. Another plus in their column is that Tony Cannon created GGPO, an online fighting game rollback netcode that some fighting games still use. One of the reasons I hope that this game does run well online and Riot makes good on all of these promises is that if the netcode is good, other fighting game developers might just have to step up. Netcode has been a really hot topic in the FGC over the last couple of years after COVID shut down in-person tournaments and we're all stuck playing online. Street Fighter V, Tekken 7, even Smash Ultimate. These games are f***ing horseshit to play online. To different extents, obviously, but it is not a good time in any of them. There have been some advancements. Guilty Gear runs well and fans created Slippy to make Melee function well online, but those aren't the standard just yet. My hope is that if Project L succeeds, partially on the back of strong netcode, other fighting game developers will be scared of losing their player base to Riot and step up their game in response. And honestly, that's true of a lot of things with Project L. Project L represents the first time in a long time that a large developer with a lot of money is putting in the effort to try to capture fighting game fans. That should scare folks at companies like Capcom and Namco into making sure that Street Fighter VI and Tekken 8 don't disappoint people so they don't go off and play Project L instead. And look, to be honest, I don't really want to be seeing the praises of Riot Games here. Let's not forget that they're still mired in scandal over fostering an environment where women were allegedly harassed and there was a COO who walked around grabbing people's balls. This is not a company I want to celebrate. But the reason I'm still a little bit hopeful for this game is that it seems like it's being made by fighting game fans for fighting game fans. Honestly, it's nice to see people who love fighting games get to make what looks like a love letter to a community that often gets the short end of the stick when it comes to stuff like this. I think about Arcane. That show was gorgeous, and it sucks knowing that animators were underpaid while making it and that the money came from a company with as much allegedly gross stuff going on as Riot. But at the same time, it was hard not to admire what happens when passionate, talented people get basically infinite time and budget to make something incredible. Fighting games don't get that. We get horrible launches, and nickel and dime DLC, and terrible communication, and 17 year load times, and people telling us that our favorite characters are just functions. My hope is that Project L, like Arcane and Valorant before it, is being made by a group of people who come from a community that they care about, and are being given the time and money to make something truly special for that community. Even if they have to take money from Riot to do it. But hey, that's just me. Let me know in the comments if you're excited for this thing or if the Riot connection turns you off or you really want to see motion inputs in this game. In the meantime, I'm going to go write about 5,000 emails to the canons asking them when they're going to put Galio in this game. Do you think they're ever going to get... You know, the, you know how they keep doing like Lego Star Wars and Lego Harry... Do you think they're ever going to get Lego League of Legends? Yeah, Lego Legends. It seems just really straightforward. Just do it, you know? Lego Legends of Runeterra. We're, we, we, if, Riot, if you want that, you have to pay me and Danny. If you want that, Mark Merrill, pay up. No, I'm, you're in on this. You're, you're, all, you're on the ride. You were in the room, you're in on the ride.